Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm so thankful that you have joined us for worship today. If you are joining us virtually, we will continue to offer this service for the next few months as a way to connect with you on our virtual platform. We are doing in-person worship at 11 o'clock in our sanctuary each Sunday, and our next outdoor in-person worship will be at 845 on June the 27th. Again, I'm glad you've joined us for worship and hope you will continue to worship with us as we praise and serve God together. I do want to say a word of appreciation to all of those who volunteered and who donated to our drive and drop for the Epworth Children's Homes Foster Care Families Project. We're so thankful for the ways in which you have supported this work and thankful for those families who continue to provide care and love for the most vulnerable of our citizens. Also, I want to remind you that our Sunday dinner team will be holding another Sunday dinner on the grounds on June the 27th from 4 to 6. We do hope that you will volunteer to come and be a part of our, of our Sunday dinner ministry team. We plan to host our Deneen the Coffee Queen again and to also provide other health care services for our friends in this community. I hope and pray that you will continue to worship with us and also to join us for in-person Sunday school for adults on site as well as our hybrid Sunday school for adults so that you can find out what you need to know. Go to wsmethodist.org and learn all the wonderful ways that we are in ministry together. And now I invite you to join me in our call to worship. Small as a mustard seed and lofty as a cedar, the kingdom of God is growing. While we sleep and rise night and day, the kingdom of God is growing. The low are brought high, the high are brought low. The kingdom of God is growing. Its large branches are home to all kinds of people. Let us worship the Lord. Join me now in today's opening prayer found printed on your screen. God, sower of seeds, be at work among us, we pray, that your church may thrive in faithfulness. Whether we are the size of a tall cedar or are a small sprig, it does not matter. You are able to put us to good use, not by our efforts, but by your power and grace we bear fruit, produce boughs of spacious welcome, you can make even a dry tree flourish. Even we can become a new creation. Urge us on then in the love of Christ. In his name we pray, amen. 
Our epistle lesson today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 10 and 14 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. So we are always confident because we know that while we are living in the body, we are away from our home with the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. We are confident and we would prefer to leave the body and to be at home with the Lord. So our goal is to be acceptable to the Lord, whether we are at home or away from home. We, we all must appear before Christ in court so that each person can be paid back for the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good or bad. The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, one died for the sake of all, therefore all died. He died for the sake of all so that those who are alive should live not for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So then from this point on, we won't recognize people by human standards. Even though we used to know Christ by human standards, that isn't how we know him now. So then if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old things have gone away and look, new things have arrived. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel lesson today comes from the fourth chapter of Mark, verses 26 through 34. I'm reading today from the Common English Bible. Then Jesus said, This is what God's kingdom is like. It's as though someone scatters seed on the ground, then sleeps and wakes night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, but the farmer doesn't know how. The earth produces crops all by itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full head of grain. Whenever the crop is ready, the farmer goes out to cut the grain because it's harvest time. He continued, What's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? Consider a mustard seed. When scattered on the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all vegetable plants. It produces such large branches that the birds in the sky are able to nest in its shade. With many such parables, he continued to give them the word as much as they were able to hear. He spoke to them only in parables, then explained to his disciples when he was alone with them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We were sitting in my church office discussing all things church when I heard myself saying something like, well, my hope is that one day we will not be divided by such issues as doctrine and interpretation, opinions about religious practice and such. My hope is that one day we can see the church living as one. That is the promise of the reign of God. His response took me aback. Yeah, well, that's not likely. I was stunned. He was not an anti-church individual. This was a man who was involved in the day-to-day -day ministries of the church. He was one of those people who was always there, even if he wasn't always a leader. The disconcerting conversation that took place in my office, though, is a mirror of where many Christians are today. We find ourselves caught between hope and promise and experience and reality. Sometimes the words of hope and promise are ringing in our ears while the daily news and sometimes the challenges that we confront as individuals and families cause us to wonder about, if not doubt, God's promise. It was just the same for the Christians in the first century. Mark's response to this incredible tension between what is and what will be is a series of Jesus parables simple stories that lay alongside our lives designed to unlock our imaginations. This is what God's kingdom is like. What's a good image for the kingdom of God? What parable can I use to explain it? In these stories, Jesus invites us not just to hear words of promise and hope, but to see God's presence and power with unveiled eyes. Eyes that see beyond the obvious realities of what is to the sometimes hidden work of God that is taking place all around us. One such parable suggests that the kingdom of God is like sowing seeds and how that tiny seed sown in the dirt of the earth becomes a harvest. Most of us have planted seeds in those tiny little cups and watched them sprout. Some of us have planted row gardens 
or sown seeds or plants in our backyards or in pots on our patios. And we're fascinated with watching and waiting. While today there is the science of soil preparation, fertilization, and water management, for Mark's first readers, there was only the soil and the rain and God's mysterious work in all of it. Mark wants to draw us into that fascination of watching and waiting to see God's reign unfold like the mystery of seeds that are sown. It's like watching a child in the congregation who finds joy and laughter in singing and dancing with the songs that we sing in the congregation and at Vacation Bible School. And then watching them grow into a, one of those young people who join the sanctuary choir and sing every Sunday morning for the glory of God. It's like observing a child who comes to church on Sunday morning and takes that first step of service in being an acolyte and then all of a sudden you realize that they've outgrown that little robe and now they're serving as an usher or maybe as a part of our technology team. It's watching and waiting to see how holy seeds, holy seeds will flourish in the world. Who could have imagined 2,021 years ago the impact that those first 12 disciples and the women who accompanied Jesus would have on the world? Christianity has not always looked like the kingdom or the kingdom of God, but she has impacted the geography and the culture of the world through art, literature, education, service, health care, and as a witness to justice, compassion, kindness, and mercy. The child labor laws in the United States of America were championed by the predecessors of our United Methodist women and by many other women's religious organizations. The members of John Wesley's Holy Club, if you remember your confirmation class as well, were people who visited the debtors' prisons in England, who were often mocked because they took care of their families, providing them food, making sure that they had money to pay their rent. John Wesley and his companions never imagined that their actions in those early days would give birth to an international denomination that is known for her pursuit of social justice and compassion for those in need. Jesus taught in this parable that sometimes our work is to wait and to watch for the harvest that will come in God's time, in God's way. And yes, there will be a harvest because no one sows a seed without the hope and expectation of a harvest, whether it's of plentiful flowers or beautiful fruit or even a tree that offers us shade. Through Mark's words, Jesus has already told us the harvest he has come to reap. He came to bind the powers of evil so that he could establish a household of God, one family of God forever. He came to recreate us and to shape us into the family of God. We're just here in the body, as Paul wrote, watching and waiting for the harvest to be ready. 
Through these parables, Jesus invites us to see God's presence and power with unveiled eyes, to imagine a world that is much more like what God wants than what we want. Jesus asks, what's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? And then he named the most unlikely thing, mustard seeds. Mustard seeds. When I was in Israel near the tomb of Lazarus in Bethany, there were beggars who sold mustard seeds in tiny little Ziploc bags. I bought one and slipped it into my Bible. Who knows if those are really mustard seeds? But what they were were tiny, little ugly, dark specks from which you would never expect anything to grow. Why would Jesus name a mustard seed as an image for the kingdom of God? What Jesus wants us to understand is that God does the unexpected with unexpected choices. God multiplies this kingdom in ways that we might never expect. From tiny little seeds like Peter and James, Mary of Magdala, and Mary and Martha of Bethany, or from disciples like you and me. Jesus wants us to learn that God's kingdom provides shelter for all the birds of the air, the birds who look like us and those who don't, the weak and the strong, the rich and the poor, those who are able in body, mind, and spirit, and those who are yearning for God's gracious healing. Jesus wants us to hear the good news that this reign of God that is breaking into our present reality and is the hope of our future is not defined as the kingdoms of this world are defined. This reign of God is not about the wealth of nations or the power that wealth affords. It's not about borders and boundaries or regional identities. This reign, this kingdom knows no bounds. There are no borders or border crossings. There's no defense of those borders or wars or violence against one another. Like the mustard bush, this reign spreads where it will. God's seeds of justice, hope, and love are being carried from place to place to place by common, ordinary people like you and me. People who have heard the yes of God's grace and are being recreated in the image and likeness of God. As Paul wrote, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away. And look, new things have arrived. This new creation is visible in the world, but it's not a necessarily drop the microphone kind of visibility. Our recreation begins as we profess our faith in Jesus Christ and reorient our lives so that our first joy is in pleasing God and in living in the way and in the will of our Lord. Reorienting our lives so that we live like Jesus, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God. 
This work of recreation that begins in each one of us culminates in a people of faith who continue to sow God's seeds of love and mercy, compassion and justice throughout all the world. Throughout this season of waiting between hope and promise and experience and reality, we wait and we watch for signs of God's presence and power among us. God's kingdom is like. Why don't you think about some things as to how you would answer that question. God's kingdom is like a Sunday dinner where everyone is welcome and there is plenty of food for all. God's kingdom is like a youth group working together on a mission project, like children planting flowers in the beds of gardens at the church, words and banners that welcome all people into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like forgiveness, restoration, kindness in abundance, and compassion for all. Like you and me, ordinary people, ordinary people striving to live like Jesus. The kingdom of God is like God's first perfect creation. Don Sellers wrote in Feasting on the Word, What is God's kingdom like? To what shall we compare it? No one answer will ever exhaust the meaning of this question, but the pulse of Jesus' words, deeds, death, and resurrection point to the secret hid from a distracted, hopeless world. This pulse is the heartbeat of God, whose rule and reign is coming with the terrible speed of mercy. While we watch and wait, look at our growing family. We are being recreated in Christ. We are walking by faith. We are being transformed and shaped into a kingdom for God, a household of God, something that is beyond our imagination. This is what the kingdom of God is like. Amen and amen. Oh God, we are grateful for the parables that lay alongside our lives and continue to speak to us today about hope and promise, about the joy of your presence and power in our lives. We pray today, oh God, that you will fill our hearts with such compassion and overflowing joy that others will find in us hopeful signs of your inbreaking reign. We ask you now to hear our voices from the many places where we are worshiping this morning as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever. Amen. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it sees something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until it sees something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death a resurrection, at the last a victory, unrevealed until it sees something God alone can see. My friends, God scatters us like seeds of joy, hope, peace, and reconciliation throughout all the earth. God sends us, God sends us to acknowledge and to celebrate God's love and God's reign throughout the earth. So go now, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, to spread God's seeds of mercy, compassion, and love wherever you go. Amen and amen.